my phone. Who are you grabbing my stuff out of my hand? No, you cannot take my property out of my hand. Right, so this video has been circulating online. The last I checked, it had 1.7 million views on X, or Twitter, if you still prefer to call it that. And whilst we can't comment specifically on this video and reach any definitive conclusions for this video in particular, it's raised a lot of questions, such as, can they search your trolley? Can they search your bags? Can they take your phone? Can they forcefully take your phone? Like, it appears that she just did. Do you have to surrender to a search? The security guard, which you'll see in a moment when we play more of the video, questions about him, and so on. So, first of all, welcome back to our Alan Robert Shaw to talk about the law. Hey, that rhymes, doesn't it, Al? Um, <laughs> it sort of does, yes. It sort, it sort of does. Um, Al, everybody, before we get into the video, is almost at 10,000 subscribers. Look at that. We are just a few away. So it will be linked in the description below, Art of Law, Al's channel. Please pop over there and subscribe. But for now, let's get to the rest of this video. Um, it's only one and a half minutes. Um, I propose we don't play all of it so that it's um, within fair remit of copyright use. And it will be linked in the description for credit as required by the CDPA. And we're going to talk about it in the general round, aren't we, Al, without reaching conclusions on this specific video. We are, because we can talk about something called sub judice, which means um, when things might be subject to legal proceedings. Actually, I did a series of videos about, uh, about that. Um, but currently, as far as we're aware, there are no active proceedings in place. So the rules are a little bit um, less strict. And as for the copyright, I suppose it's actually, this is uploaded by the lady with the shopping trolley, isn't it? So I suppose yeah. there's a, an implied license for anybody to use it because she has put it out there going, hey, everybody, what do you think about this? I, I just want to get our defence down. No, already, absolutely. You know, and um, copyright claim. And, and indeed, the, the TikTok watermark is there for that very reason, so that when they are used, shared and, and, and so on, the, there is a, a permanent credit as to where it came from. So with that said, let's watch a bit more. The context is obviously, if you haven't gathered by now, we're in a supermarket, the lady's having a trolley searched by, it is actually two people. Uh, let's watch a bit of the video and we'll talk about it in the round, you understand. So she's obviously checking the receipt. This guy appears to be undercover. Since you're going through my shopping and you're saying you're a store detective, but you've got no ID and you've showed me no ID. Yeah, I'm recording. Right, so there's two points popped up straight away. Recording and the ID issue. Because he's got no ID. Uh, we're at 19 seconds. If we go back a bit, you wouldn't say if you met him walking around the store that he works at the store. Obviously, he's just in plain clothes. So first of all, we've got security officer issues straight away, haven't we, Al? SIA. Yeah, because um, there's the Security Industry Authority, and that regulates sort of any aspect of security. I mean, it's not just like door staff. That's the most obvious one where you see people, you know, with their yellow badges um, on their arms. But what people might not know is that the SIA, you need SIA certification for all sorts of things. Even viewing CCTV now is an SIA regulated activity. And you have to go on the training course and pass the qualification just to be allowed to look at um, security. Now, obviously, the um, SIA people, they're supposed to be badged up all the time when they are on duty. But obviously, when they're undercover, that would sort of defeat the object a little bit. Um, but they should produce ID. Because what a lot of people don't necessarily realise is um, PACE, the Police and Criminal Evidence Act 1984, that just doesn't just cover the police, despite the title. It covers anybody, quote, charged with the investigation of offences, unquote. And that has been held to include store detectives. So store detectives are bound by all the same rules as the police when it comes to investigating offences, keeping records, keeping notes, how to conduct interviews and things like that. Yeah, and it's, it's because... You know what that uh, is, yeah, yeah, because people misunderstand Police and Criminal Evidence Act. They hear the police bit and then think that it only applies to police, but it's the police and 
criminal evidence. So anything to do with criminal evidence that may be used in investigation and subsequent prosecution of an offence, it is all governed. The purpose of the Act and the codes that go along with it is so that everything that is collected is fair and it, it doesn't prejudice either the investigation and the proceedings and indeed the person and their rights along with it. Just jumping back on a point with the CCTV, the, the, the point there is that someone using CCTV is surveilling a person and the, the very purpose of it will be to watch a person's every movements. And so this is aside from if you walk around with a camera in the street, you're just filming somebody, they just incidentally included. If you start following them around, that starts to uh, cross a few lines. If you're doing it with the purpose of then using it as evidence to prosecute them for an offence, then clearly there's um, a, a need for that to be regulated. Um, and then there's the filming of the lady there. So the, we'll probably come back to that one. We'll watch a bit more of the video because the, obviously this lady with the trolley has now decided, I'm going to film this, presumably for her own protection. So let's watch a bit more. Well, just before, got, Dan, sorry, just yeah, before you clear that, this is something that crops up because one of the things I do is I advise um, animal rights groups that do undercover investigations, mm. um, partly it's the defamation aspect, but also... A lot of the time, that evidence is passed on to the, you know, requisite authorities for the prosecution, and there is an issue there as to is that evidence admissible? Because normally, undercover investigations are covered by PACE and something called RIPA, uh, the Regulation of Investigatory Procedures Act, and there have been cases where people have collected evidence of animal abuse but the courts have refused to admit it because they've said you didn't do it in accordance with all the rules. Mm. Now, much as I would have liked that evidence to go in, I can see the argument, because the argument is, if we basically like slack rules for non-professionals, the authorities could effectively franchise out their investigations to the private sector. And it all depends on if you have two cores of your relationship. If you just do it as a one-off, say, for instance, you record something or you tape a phone call and it's, and it's evidence in a serious mm. crime, it will be admitted, even if it was obtained unlawfully, just because, you know, it's not like America where the fruit of the poison tree and, you know, admissibility is really hard. Over here, they would go, well, notwithstanding how it was done, this was a one-off, it's vital evidence, mm -hmm. it's going in. But the argument is, if you're doing this all the time and passing on the evidence, you've effectively set yourself up as a police force mm. or as a detective agency, and therefore you are bound. So that's just a little aside. So you there. need to stick to um, the codes. But yeah, this this is a big yeah this is a big issue that all these codes don't just to apply to quotes the authorities. They can apply in the private sector and to the public. Yeah, there's two side points to that before we move on with the video, but um, you get loads of snippets in this video, but um, two side points. One is people often ask, can you record conversations with you know whoever, your insurance company or, or whatever? For your own purposes, yes, of course you can. It's a contemporaneous record for your own records of that conversation. Uh, and also, can you record covertly to use it in proceedings? Well, as Al just said, typically as a one-off and not as an organization set up to do that, yes, again, you can. And a lot of people in the, in the comments say, well, no, you can't. Well, you can, because I've actually been in court with judges saying, well, I'm allowing this recording, notwithstanding it was recorded covertly and discreetly and in any other sense, potentially a little bit unfairly, but it did capture the precise nature of, let's call them the arguments, uh, between the parties, which showed exactly what happened, how it happened, and everything else. And so a full transcript was produced, and it did show every party in their true light. So that answers that question. So, yeah, um, there, no doubt there'll be more, but let's uh, let's watch a bit more. No idea, and you've showed me no idea. Yeah, I'm recording. I am recording. You have chased me down the aisle after I, I paid for my show. to come and speak to you. He's just told me he's a store Can detective. Stop no, I cannot stop recording. So in the... All right, so again with the recording, she obviously is unhappy about, I mean, I, I would be unhappy about being recorded, but that's not the point. Um, being unhappy about rec being recorded doesn't mean they can't record you. Um, shall we phone the police? Now, question mark here, uh, you know, did, did she say, shall we phone the police because of the recording or because of the, the nature of what they suspect? Or it looks like they suspect she's done. Mm. Not sure which. I think one's exacerbated the other. Uh, but um, as for the recording, 
there's no need for her to stop recording, notwithstanding it's at private premises and all, all the rest of it. If you walked in with a camera, ordinarily, uh, as Al said earlier, no automatic right of privacy in a public place. This is a public place, even though it's private premises. This is a little bit difficult for some people to get their head around. It's private premises to which the public have access on payment or otherwise. So it's a public place. Uh, you can film in a public place. Ordinarily, if, if I walked in with a camera, and if I started filming and I said, hey, you know, I'm, I'm going to walk around and start filming. And they said, you know, sir, can you not do that? Can you take, you know, take that outside and or stop recording or leave? I'd be obliged to do that because there's no reason for me to be recording in store. And I, I should stop. But in this situation, it's slightly different. She, she could easily argue that she's recording it for her own protection as to what's going on. Al? Yeah, I mean, obviously, a private premises can set their own rules for your entry. And they could say, I mean, we get this a lot with um, venues, because you'll see that, you know, no recording in this venue if you go to see a gig or something like that, for obvious reasons. Um, there's nothing that actually says you can't record in the store. Um, I mean, there is this weird thing about it's a you know, it's a private property, but it is a public space. Like, for instance, you could commit a public order act offence. Um, in somewhere where where there's really no restrictions on entry um, it's the same with like you know you can get done for drink driving on a camping site if it's if there's no gate and you can just drive in or out the camping site and there have been lots of cases on this um, then you can you can be done for drink driving whereas if it's you know you camp in a field and it's all locked up then you can't be but yeah generally speaking uh, the test is reasonable expectation of privacy however one sort of thing that defeats privacy we say there is no confidence in iniquity and this is why if even if there's like say a non-disclosure agreement that somebody is lying about something and you can prove that but you'd have to breach the non-disclosure agreement the non-disclosure agreement falls away because you are allowed to breach privacy to quote collect correct a false impression mm -hmm. and in this particular case there's lots of defenses because like say i'm you know She's filming for her own protection. There's an incident here where, you know, there might be a row as to exactly what did or didn't happen. I mean, I can't see any court having any issue no. with filming. Like I said, if you were just to go in and, like, you know, you're blogging or vlogging and you're walking around with a camera, a store could say, would you mind not doing that? Because, you know, there's other people in here. Yeah. So, you know, they, they, you know, they respect their privacy. So they can make it a condition of entry, but... If something like this happens and you start recording it, uh, no court in the land is going to sort of have a problem with that. No. I mean, the general test for uh, data protection, privacy, filming, etc., is no more than is necessary. It's used for the purpose that it was collected for. And, and in any event, she's an individual. So the standard sort of GDPR is not going to apply to her anyway. So we are really down to, as, as you said, Al, conditions of entry to the store, implied agreement with those terms, to what extent somebody looks up the term. I, I just looked, actually, while you were talking, Al, to see Tesco website. Now, in a, in a two-minute Google search for Tesco's terms and conditions for filming in-store, I assume it's there somewhere, but it wasn't immediately apparent. I would assume that it's there. But what what extent do people look at that before they go in store? I suspect not a lot. So no, there's no no judge in our view is going to say that this was wrong on her part to film. And in any event, it's a civil issue. Filming is 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 not in this situation going to be in any way anything other than a civil wrong, if anything. And I don't I can't see any judge saying that. So that is complete completely out. Let's see what else we've got. That's not a problem. I've paid for all my items. So I am entitled to record. record yes, I can record you. You are trying to accuse me. So she said, you're not allowed to record us. It's illegal, which is obviously wrong. She's unhappy about um, being recorded. You can tell that because she's got a hand to her chest, which is a common sort of body language sign of, of be, feeling uncomfortable, feeling sort of um, invaded. And I, I, you know, I feel bad for anybody being recorded. She's obviously got a job to do. This is no criticism of her. She's there to do a job. She's there to prevent theft from the store. Now, Obviously, it goes without saying. We don't know that this lady with the trolley has, and we don't know that she hasn't taken anything in there that's um, that's not hers. They obviously suspect that she has because they've stopped her to search her. But let's let's carry on. Or it, or it could be just a random stop. Or a random, absolutely. Yeah. I, I, 
I never use the self scan despite them sort of trying to show me how it works because mm. because my shopping experience is I just buy anything with a yellow label on it. So I need because they never put the new barcodes on properly. I spend all my time and I, I do do my own scanning because I want to make sure I've got the bargain. But they're so used to me going like, oh, I've broken it. Oh, it's, it's, it's put the full price through. It's a scandal because yeah. they, you know, they. Although just to say, and just to pad this out, well, I don't need to pad it out, but just to sort of go for another tangent, I use my local Tesco's because it stays open really late. So I used to go there after the gym. And they were the kind of people, it was somebody there who said, oh, you know, you can use your watch to pay. Because they, they said, mm. oh, they showed me how to do it. Yeah, so I for did. ages, I was going in for the evening, chatting to everybody, getting my stuff, going ping and walking out. And then one night, I went to sort of ping, I was walking out, and they went, oh, it hasn't gone through. I went, what do you mean? She says, it hasn't gone through. I said, no, it just beeped. They said, no, that's the beep saying it hasn't registered. Mm. And it was like, oh, God. And I put it on, the, and I got a completely different beep to the one I'd been hearing because I'd been basically not doing it properly. And I, I'm just thinking, oh my god, how many times I've been accidentally shoplifting? I caught the accidentally uh, Section Two Theft Act defence. It's got to be dishonest and mm -hmm. being useless at technology. This was the same thing with the oyster um, thing on the buses. I know yeah. somebody made a little wallet where when you tapped it, it wasn't an Oyster card, but it just beeped. It yeah. Just, it just put a little piezo in there, so it got beep, and it's like, oh, God. Well, it's an interesting using that, point with the self-scan, because I remember them first coming out, and I, I'm, I'm a sucker for any technology, and so I picked it up. I thought, this is really cool. So I picked it up, registered straight away. I've used it ever since. Now, I'm sorry to anyone that, you know, has statistically lost a job because of me with the amount of times that I've used the self-scan. My apologies, but I've used it every single time since. The only time I haven't is if I'm on holiday somewhere and it's a shop that doesn't have a self-scan and I'm not signed up for it. But I've used it every single time since to the extent that I get to know the sort of supervisors for that area. And we often joke about, because bits of meat have got, I know you don't eat meal, Al, apologies, but um, bits of meat have got security tags on the bottom and <laughs> uh, obviously they go off. Now I've got to a point where I, I take it, let's, let's, let's pretend that this is one, right? I take one and I, I put it through the, the, uh, the barriers and it beeps and I look, look at the, uh, the, the assistant there who's obviously familiar with us by now. And I say, yeah, this, 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 this one's obviously got a tag on it because they don't always have a tag on it. And so sometimes they've said, there won't be a tag on that, don't worry. And I walk out and it beeps and I'm like, oh my God, and I feel really bad. And I have to take it back and they take the stuff out and find the one that's got a tag on it. So now I, I know which ones have got tag or likely to have tags on it. It's usually the smaller high value items. And so I hand them to have the tags taken off. And almost always they say, no, I don't need to see it. And I oh, no, 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 please, please, please. And I'll, I'll grab my receipt and I will you know, shunt it in front to say, here's, here's the proof that I've paid for it. Because, you know, I don't want anyone to think that I'm just blagging the systems by saying, you know, do you mind remove the tag from this? And actually, ah, I haven't paid for it. Do you know what I mean? But I have to, in my mind, I have to prove that I've paid for it. Otherwise I'd feel guilty about it, even though I've done nothing wrong. So, in that case, if there were a, case, a time when I hadn't scanned something, with the amount of times that I have been like that, I was talking about this with Al before we started recording, I believe, now this is not obviously not encouraging anybody to do anything dishonest, but I believe that if there were one occasion where I hadn't scanned something, they would say, oh, well, you know, we, we know how honest you've been for however many years you've been here. They would probably be okay with it. They're, they're not going to jump to the conclusion that I'm now just suddenly turned to robbing the store. Well, it's not robbery because there's no force involved, but you know what I mean? So that's an interesting point. A lot of people say, no, you know, they're not going to search me and this sort of stuff. Um, Al, I think you you said the same thing. When I, I said, I would just say, yeah, sure, search search it, knock yourself out. You know, everything's there. You know, if it's not, I'm sorry, but, you know, I'm sure everything's there and I've scanned it all. Um, but I, I can have a problem with that. Although, no. um, is it we, just a, 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 another sort of like insider thing with the bar, we actually can get an app on our phones that allows us to bypass all the security at court. Um, but what I, again, I'm not usually an early adopter of technology. I like to see it working. But I did. I was I thought this is great because it just saves all that time queuing and getting searched. So I got the app, the, the thing put on my phone. Uh, and the first time we tried to use it, you know, I went down and I was trying to get it up. And then 
the court staff were trying to get their app to work to actually be able to scan it. And it literally took us about 20 minutes to get it. And um, I'm re-downloading my thing and they're re-downloading theirs and we're trying to, <laughs> they're trying to pair their form with something else. Yeah. And we finally got it working. And it's like, I presented my thing and it's got like a QR code on it. I presented that. They put their scan on it. It went bing and it went random search. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I've got one similar to that because um, I I got in there and they insisted that I use it. And I try to because it, it's a bit like Apple for anyone that doesn't know. It's a bit like Apple Pay. You you double or triple whatever it is. Click the side and the all the cards come up, one of which will be the, the bar cancel ID card for whatever reason, because obviously they expire for whatever reason in between court hearings. It had expired. I hadn't realized. And so it didn't show I had to redo it. And we were getting, my train was late and I was getting late anyway. And so they insisted that I re-download it. I was like, well, can you not just search me? It'd be quicker. I'll download it later. And they insisted that I stand there and download it. As I'll, you just said, you spent more time doing it than it would have been. The, the idea is to save time. <laughs> and they, they insisted I stand there and download it and then scan myself in with that. I'm not going to say which court it was. I don't want to embarrass anybody, but there we go. Um, well, the RCJ won't. Eat. The Royal Courts of Justice now won't accept them. <laughs> or, or at least, well, that's what they told me. They said, "Oh no, you, you, we don't do that anymore." That yeah. might be though, because I once tried to do a thing years ago of what I thought it looked really cool if I walked through the Royal Courts of Justice and I had my keys in my hand, and I threw them over the top of the, <laughs> you know, the scanner you walk through, because I wanted to catch them. Because I've seen somebody do that in a yeah. film, and it looked so cool. Where I just threw it and caught it on the other side, yeah. and I threw it, and I just like. Despite all my years of playing cricket very badly, I threw it and it just went straight over and just went behind the counter. And it's like, oh. I was going, honestly, that would have looked so cool if it had worked. Yeah. And they were like, yeah, just put them on the tray with everything else. <laughs> Probably didn't smile either, did they? But anyway. Uh, no. All right. Um, now we're coming to the crunch with this. So um, all all sort of jokes and, and standard discussion aside, so we've got this lady being having a trolley search. Now, there's another question mark here because to clarify a point here, the store security or not, SIA or not, and produced his ID or not, is not entitled to search this lady's bags if they are her own bags. Only the police can do that. They can detain her if they've got suspicion that she's shoplifting and call the police and the police can search her under a normal search and all the normal search rules apply. But the store... Security officers cannot do that. They have no power to search. Question mark over the trolley, though. I don't think that's the, quite the same category. I haven't researched it, and I, I'm, I'm not sure what the definitive answer would be. Uh, but, Al, I suspect you agree that that's probably different than searching her own bags. I suspect that they would have the right to search their trolley for items that are in it. For their own items, well, yeah, because, because uh, arguably they're searching their own no, trolley for their own items, right? Yeah, because also it's a I, it'll be in the terms and conditions of using the cell scan because mm. I think it does actually say that you know that there are random searches and you consent to a random search, but that's only a random search of you know, like I say the shopping trolley. Yeah. Obviously, if you're stuffing things down, you know, inside yourself, and you know there are professional shoplifters who do all the tin foil in the bags routine and things like that, or people with the uh, you know, special aprons so they can carry amazing amounts of things. But generally speaking, what you will find is they'll say, would you mind if I searched your bag? Because mm. they can ask, you can consent to a search. But if you say no, then all they can really do is say, in that case, I'm going to call the police because I suspect you of theft. And then, of course, when the police come, they can say, can I search your bag? And, you know, you can you can detain somebody because effectively it's a citizen's arrest. Mm -hmm. Um Although you've got to be careful because the one difference between a citizen's arrest and a police arrest is you can only arrest somebody if they are actually guilty of the offence. Whereas the police can arrest you on suspicion. Technically, you can only arrest somebody on a citizen's arrest if they are definitely committing the offence. Um, I mean, in practice, if it turned out it was a horrible mistake, then there probably wouldn't be any comeback for you. Uh, but that is something to bear in mind, actually, because they're not totally... Um, synonymous or equitable or equal or whatever. Yeah, just looking at, uh, this is under 24A of PACE here. Let me see if I can just bring that on. Hang on a second. 
Um, where's Safari? Yeah, there's, uh, so a person other than a constable may arrest without a warrant anyone who is in the act of committing an indictable offence, which of course shoplifting is, even though it's ordinarily treated summarily for under £200. Anyone who has reasonable grounds for suspecting to be committing an indictable offence. So it's the indictable offence aspect, you see, yeah. and how many people know what's a summary offence and what's an indictable mm. offence and what's an either way offence. And just to confuse things even further, the police actually, the, the, the law also splits things up into arrestable offences and non-arrestable offences. Mm -hmm. And then again, they're not, they don't quite match up with indictable and summary. But yeah, if you just see somebody, you know, I mean, this could be relevant with everything that's going on at the moment. If you just think, oh, somebody's committing a public order offence or, you know, section five or something, which is summary only. Uh, and you say, I'm arresting you, and it turned out they had a defence, then you don't fall within the remit of section 24A. Mm -hmm. And um, with shoplifting as well, although because of the nature of the offence, someone can still elect, if um, as in elect Crown Court trial. So uh, always worth taking advice for all of that. So final bit of the well, it's not the final bit, but it's the final bit we'll watch of this video. Um, we're coming to the crunch here. So this is this is what I think made this video go viral. Actually, I've got to publish that to switch back to there. There we go. My phone. Who are you grabbing my stuff out of my hand? No, you cannot take my property out of my hand. You can't you are... Yes, I can record you. If you're trying to cause a scene, no one will not calm down. I'm paid for shopping. You're trying to stop me from leaving here. I'm not trying to you... stop you. I'm you I'm just grabbed my trolley. And talk... So despite the grab or what looks like a grab of the phone, um, to coin our words properly, it looks like she reached out to grab her phone. Um, Despite doing that, she was then, you know, trying to calm the situation down afterwards. I think she, in, in sort of her defence, I think she did realise that she went a step too far and she tried to calm the situation down. I think she's just very upset about being recorded. Um, but if she did try to grab the phone, then that, of course, was wrong. She can't do that. No, because... Um a lot of people, some people were discussing and were saying, well, that, you know, this could amount to an assault. And we're not saying this, you know, we're not passing judgment on this at all, because that might be for an, another tribunal to decide. But just to say what the issues are, assault doesn't necessarily mean actually making contact with somebody. The definition of assault is putting somebody in apprehension of the use, the immediate use of force. So the test is... Um, it doesn't, you don't have to be scared, and that's another thing. It's not fear of the use of force, it's apprehension, which means you anticipate somebody might use force on you. And that's, that's all assault is. If there's actual contacts, we call that a battery, although assault is now Section 39 of the um, Offences Against the Persons Act, and it doesn't distinguish within the offence between assault and battery. But if you are charged, it will say something like assault, by beating or it might just say assault um you can't commit assault by words alone by the way so i'm going to punch you isn't an assault but you know waving your fist at somebody might be an assault and there's also that rather weird thing that words can actually negate an assault the classic example is there was a guy who said were it not a size time time i would run you through with my sword and waved his sword at the guy and he was prosecuted, but the defence was, by saying, were it not a size time, in other words, but for the fact I could be arrested and charged for this, I would stab you. They said, actually, that isn't an assault because he's made it clear. And mm -hmm. the funny thing is, I'm going to say this without going into details about which client. <laughs> I, it's, I was actually on the phone to the client when something was kicking off. It was a row about something. And... The police were there, and my chap said to the other people, he said, in my, back in my day, you'd have got a shotgun in the face for this. And the police were going, uh, your guy just threatened to shoot somebody. I went, no, no, without getting into technical things and talking about a size time, the fact that he said, back in my day, I would have shot you, know, we would have shot you, clearly says that he realised time has moved on. And it was one of the, this was the, the Met, and the Met are brilliant because they just saw, they're so busy, and they went... Okay, how about this? We'll tell we'll tell the other side to off, and you tell your guy to, and then maybe nobody has to get arrested. How's that? And it's like, yeah, that sounds like a really good plan. <laughs> Let's take that. Yeah. 
So there we are. There's a, a whole load of issues in the round with this video. It's been um, it's been circulated online. It's probably got well like two three million views by now. Lots of issues coming up here. Um, I feel badly for everybody involved because no one likes to be suspected of doing something, especially if they haven't done it. They feel badly enough when they have done it, let alone when they haven't done it. Um, yeah. And store assistants and security officers, employees, whatever you want to call them, they, they have a difficult job as it is because of the nature of their job, just like civil enforcement officers and everybody else. But lots of issues raised. Hopefully that has addressed some of the questions generally in the round without coming to a definitive conclusion on this particular video, right Al? Well, yeah, the one thing I was going to add, and again, just as a general comment. Now, of course, if you were using the force to permanently deprive somebody of their property, that's the elements of offence of robbery. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But robbery requires the theft element, one of which is permanently deprived of mm -hmm. the property. And if it's just, I just wanted to stop you filming, but obviously I was going to give you your phone back, then the theft element sort of falls away. Again, I'm not suggesting this would happen here, but you know that's the potentially the most serious yeah. thing that could come out of this, is that arguably there's the elements of robbery there, but proving intention to permanently deprive in this situation might yeah. be the hard thing because there's no suggestion that she wouldn't have given the phone back. Well, it would. I, because I there's... feel sorry for all concerned as well. Because, no, absolutely. Because there, there's analogy. bound to be questions um, or even statements of fact somewhere saying that she has, you know, attempted robbery, which is just not going anywhere because there is more than a very reasonable doubt that she was only taking the phone to stop a recording. That was it's quite obvious. She was, yeah. If she was taking the phone off her or trying to uh, that she was doing it to try to stop a recording it's quite obvious that that's all it was to any reasonable yeah. objective view in my view and i'm sure al's view as well so there we go hopefully you found that vaguely interesting to adopt my learned friend's um <laughs> phraseology um make sure you hop over to art of law i've deliberately put it here so you can read it along here right. art of law in the description we want ten thousand subscribers for al please um it's been an interesting first journey to get going and uh, we thank you all for your kind attention please do subscribe here as well if you haven't because i know a percentage of you don't and you just watch for free which is fine if you like but it does help us if you subscribe uh, so thank you very much and uh, we shall see you next time ciao for now indeed take care